uh, if you're with us, we're doing morning prayer right to. Uh, if you have your Book of Common Prayer with you, we're on page 75. And we will start with the Advent opening prayer. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Turning to page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We continue with the invitatory. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The Vanity, page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed uh, for this first Sunday of Advent is Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the Son of Man you have made so strong for yourself, and so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The first reading the first Sunday of Advent is from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, 
to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like the one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the works of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Isaiah reading is Canticle uh, 9. Found on page 86, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember his, that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading comes from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to you, my God, always, for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus, where in every way you have been enriched by him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the reading from Corinthians is Canticle 10 on page 86, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways, your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As for rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, and it will return to me empty. It will not return to me empty, 
but it will accomplish that for which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. And I'm going to uh, add uh, the first few chap first few verses of Mark before I go to the main part of Mark that is in our reading. So I'm beginning chapter 13, verse 1. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? Then Jesus asked him, You see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when this will be. And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he. And they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But this is the beginning of the birth pangs. Jesus said in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send out the angels and gathers his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And when I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As uh, Christians and believers, we worship in a tradition that starts the church year a month before the end or the beginning of the new calendar year begins, January 1st. The month is full of God's promises. Some are joyful, some are perplexing. The four weeks start now and end at Christmas. We call this time Advent. And Advent is the time of 
lengthening darkness, a time when light becomes more precious, a time of dim light and total darkness that overshadows the day by more than half. Throughout Advent, God leads us by God's presence, week by week, as we wait for God's revelation to appear, for God's light to seep away the darkness. Wait. Wait, we hear. Wait is the watchword for Advent. It is such a difficult thing to do, this waiting, especially in our time when we are so used to instant gratification. And of course, this year especially has been a year of waiting. We have been waiting for the election to play out in a time that has been fraught by polarization in our nation, waiting for a resolution of the pandemic, waiting for the economy to recover, waiting for the time when we can return to normal. We may wish we could control time, this time, this thing we call time, and time in general. But control of time is out of our hands. Time is a concept created by humans for humans. And we measure it in increments of hours, days, months, years. Time has beginnings and ends. Events and lives are bounded by beginning and by an end. But remember, God is outside of time. And it is God who will lead us through these weeks between now and Christmas. It is God who will direct us to what is good and what is true. In today's Isaiah lesson, the lesson breaks in on our presence by showing God as a cause of awesome deeds. The mountains quaked, the nations trembled at God's presence. God was angry because of human sin and human transgression. But wait, to our surprise, this God who is wrathful and angry is surprisingly revealed in Isaiah as the creator God, the one who is like a potter, who moans us as if we are clay. This is a God who delivers us from our iniquity who desires us in spite of our failings, because God made us and we are the work of his hands. We are God's creatures, made in God's image, precious in God's sight. So as we spend time with God during this Advent, we will watch an unfolding of God's time and the story of our salvation in Jesus Christ at Christ Mass. So, May I suggest that we let this time with God shape us as we prepare to meet God as one of us at the Incarnation. Mark shows us four humans, people like us, disciples who are in the presence of Jesus. And they are Peter, James, John, and Andrew. And they are surprised by Jesus' announcement of the destruction of the great temple. Is time for them about to go south? Is it time to go wacky? As Jews, they saw the temple as God's favor and presence for the people of Israel. Did the destruction of the temple mean time was coming to an end for the disciples and for the Jews? Did the presence of God symbolized by the temple mean that with its destruction, God no longer shaped time. We, unlike the aforementioned disciples, know that the temple is for us a symbol of God's presence, but that its destruction did not erase God's presence. When calamities occur, such as those events that are shaping us now, we are perplexed. What does all of this mean? We are waiting in anticipation 
What does time have in store for us, we wonder? Perhaps we can understand that individually we cannot shape the flow of time, but we can live in a way that gives meaning to this time as we live through it. As a person of faith, I am reminded that time is not my own. Yes, I can manage some elements, make some adjustments, but the big picture is out of my hands. Let me offer two things to consider as we wait as Advent unfolds. One can know with certainty the coming of Christ as a child at Christmas, the light that erases the darkness. The other thing I can offer is that we wait to see how God will be made manifest in our lives and the lives of others. My hope is that the Spirit of Christ, the Reconciler and Healer, will be present and active in the midst of the overwhelming issues we are confronted with now. From my perspective, I am seeing light, an end, a resolution of our time of travail these past six, seven months. And I pray that the peace and light of Christ will guide us in the days and in the weeks to come. Amen. Our response to the words that you've just heard, the Apostles' Creed, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 96. I believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers on page 97. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for this first Sunday of Advent we pray, Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put the armor of light now in the time of our mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again, in his glorious majesty, to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life of mortal, through him who lives and reigns 
with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our intercessory prayer this morning uh, will be, we will be using uh, prayer form two on page 385. You won't need to respond, so if you'd like to just listen to the prayers. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Marty, our bishop, for Joan, Gary, Stephen, Jerry, and Melinda, our Billings priests, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who see God, for a deeper knowledge of God, Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Pedro Hernandez, Larry Amstutz. Pray for all those who have died. I ask your prayers for those on our prayer list, including Ed, Alice, Harry, Marlis, Jake, Carrie, Jean, Mary, Victoria, Cassandra, Peggy, Mike, Kay, Jerry, Virginia, Lisa, Bob, Carolyn, Ken, Janie, Gail, Ross, Sandra. Please name those whom you know and who desire prayers. Pray for these people. I ask your prayers for the men and women serving in the United States military and other dangerous professions, naming especially Chad, Chris, Jason, Jeremy, Kendall, Levi, Vandy, Michael, Stephen, Stephanie, and any others you would care to name. Pray for these heroes. I ask your prayers for all those preparing for confirmation and the renewing of their baptismal covenant, especially Abby, Adam, Avon, Franny, Megan, and Margaret. Pray for these seekers. I ask your prayers for all the strays and pets left out in the cold, many without shelter or food. Pray for God's creatures and for the softening of human hearts towards them. I 
I ask your thanksgivings for the privilege and abundance we enjoy in this, enjoy in this nation and anything else you care to name. I give thanks for hope that it is appearing on the horizon, light that will end the travail that we are currently experiencing in this nation. Give thanks to God. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for the Church of Bermuda, extra-provincial to the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Right Reverend Nicholas Dill, Bishop of Bermuda. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for St. Mark's and Haver. In the parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for Alan Cleby, Virginia and Larry Kyrus, Harry and Karen Leahy, Elizabeth Lair, John, Cammy, Trenton, Emma, and Megan Lamb. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been answered. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Now shall we turn to page 101 and give thanks the general thanksgiving almighty god father of all mercies we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made we bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life but above all for your innumerable immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory and we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain amongst you now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Sorry for the, the glitch. 
Uh, I'm on a learning curve, and apparently it's fairly steep at the moment, but uh, I apologize. Um, sorry we couldn't be in church. We're in my kitchen, as you can see behind. Um, and it's a typical kitchen. The refrigerator door with all the notes and messages on it. So anyway, thank you for uh, tuning in, praying together with me. And I hope that you have a fruitful rest of the day and uh, the rest of the week, as a matter of fact. And Mother Melinda, who is on vacation, will be back with us next weekend. And hopefully all the glitches will be cleared up. Anyway, have a blessed day.